Hey, my name is Wes. In this presentation, we're going to be going over the digital to analog converter system within the ATX Mega 128A1U microcontroller. The X Mega has two digital to analog converter or DAC modules, one on port A, one on port B. Each of these modules has two separate channels that can operate independently of each other. Each of these channels within a DAC module has its own output pin. These output pins are labeled DAC0 and DAC1. The DAC has a 12 bit resolution and is capable of converting data at up to one mega samples per second. The naming convention is DAC A for port A and DAC B for the DAC module on port B. This alternate pin function table shows us which pins the DAC0 and DAC1 outputs correspond to on port A. In this case, DAC0 corresponds to pin A2 and DAC1 corresponds to pin A3. Also make note on the far right column of the A ref pin. This is similar to the ADC, it's the voltage reference that the DAC will use. We'll talk more about this in the following slides. This is the block diagram for each DAC module within the XMEGA. It mainly consists of the channel uh, specific data registers, such as channel 0 data and channel 1 data. This is where the digital data is written to that is to be converted by the DAC into an analog voltage, which is then present on the output pin. There are also a few uh, external as well as internal voltage references that can be used similar to the ADC system. Next, let's go over the recommended DAC initialization procedure for the XMEGA. We'll talk about each of these steps independently on their own slides and go into detail about the registers and the bits and bit fields within them that can be configured. First, we'll have to choose single or dual channel operation. Then we'll select channels that will be triggered by events if we decide to use the event system. And then we select a reference voltage and whether the data, the digital input data should be supplied left or right adjusted. Finally, we enable the channels that we're using as well as the entire DAC module. Let's start off with the control B register. We can use the channel select bit field to determine if we want exclusively channel zero or channel one to be operational. Or alternatively, we can use dual channel operation where both channel zero and one are enabled at the same time. Next, we'll decide if we want any of the channels to be triggered by the event system. The channel 1 and channel 0 trigger bits can be used to decide if a given channel uh, should actually be triggered by the event system. If we do enable any of these bits, the event control register within the DAC system needs to be initialized to specify which event from the event system actually triggers a DAC conversion. Next, we'll select a reference voltage. The reference select bit field will determine which of the voltage references on the X mega will be utilized. ARF A and ARF B can be applied externally on pins 0 of port A and B respectively. This can be seen in the alternate pin functions table in the DOC 8335 manual. After we choose a reference voltage, we can then use the left adjusted bit to determine if the data that we input should be right adjusted or left adjusted. By default, uh, the input data is right adjusted, but if we set the left adjusted bit, then we can interpret the data as left adjusted. Note that this configuration applies to both channels, so if you wish to have uh, some part of your program use right justified data and some, another part use left justified data, then you can't do that with a single DAC module. More details regarding when to choose each justification will be provided in later slides after we talk about the data registers. After the DAC module has been fully configured, we have to actually enable the channels that we're using. We can do this by setting the channel 1 and channel 0 enable bits, which will actually enable each channel respectively. Finally, we enable the entire DAC module overall. To do this, we set the enable bit within the control A register. Note that you have to be careful not to clear any of the bits such as channel 1 or channel 0 enable that you may have written previously. To initiate a digital to analog conversion within the XMEGA, the channel 0 or channel 1 data registers must be written to. Each of these data registers consists of two 8-bit registers, channel 0 or 1 data high and low. Notice at the bottom that there are two different configurations, one for when the data is right adjusted and another for when the data is left adjusted. By default, since the left adjusted bit is 0, the data in the data registers is interpreted as right adjusted. 
This means that the 12 bit digital data that we're trying to convert is in the lower 12 bits of the data register. Conversely, when the left adjusted bit is 1, the data is interpreted as left adjusted. Therefore, the 12 bits of digital data that we need to convert have to be in the upper 12 bits of the data register. Before manually writing to one of the data registers to initiate a conversion, the channel 1 and channel 0 data register empty bits or flags within the status register should be checked. When either of these bits are set, that indicates that the respective channel's data register is empty, and thus data can be successfully written without overwriting a pending conversion. When using the DAC without the event system, writing to the data register is what actually starts a conversion. You have to write to the low byte before the high byte because writing to the high byte is what actually triggers the conversion. For example, if we wrote to the high byte before the low byte, as soon as we wrote to the high byte, a conversion would be started and the data written to the low byte would not be taken into account in the conversion. It's possible to do 8-bit conversions with the DAC module using left adjusted data. This allows you to only or exclusively write to the data high register. Doing 8-bit conversions has some pros and cons. The main benefit is that it saves you from having to do an extra write to the low byte or the low register. Um, but the downside is that you lose four bits of resolution, which for some applications could be very critical, but for some it may not matter. The DAC system of the XMEGA is one of the easier peripherals to get set up, and it can be used in tandem with the ADC system to translate back and forth between the analog and digital domains. This is pretty crucial for certain applications such as dig digital signal processing, where analog, analog voltage signals can be sampled by the ADC, converted into a digital format, and then some processing such as adding effects like echoes, etc., can be applied digitally and then you can use the DAC to output it you know, back to an amplifier or speaker back into the analog domain. You can find more details about the DAC system that weren't covered in this lecture uh, in section 29 of the XMEGA AU manual.